All right, everybody, what is going on? As you know, my name is Brennan Sabalski, and welcome back to another episode of the Average Joe's Fishing Show. I just got back from work, it's late, I'm headed out for Burbot. They're about to bite anytime now, any day, so I'm getting out there, I gotta go, just got the bike running, we're gonna get out there and uh, we're gonna see if we can get on them, so here we go, stay tuned. Alright everybody, I'm out on the lake, I'm out on the spot, just ripped the bike out, I know where the fish are going to be from past years, I have a waypoint on my phone, so I'm going to start drilling a couple holes, I'm going to get fishing. I'm hoping to get some burbot tonight, the spawn should be on any time now. Like the spawn is always like end of February, early March, so that's where we are at right now, so I'm hoping to get a few, and I'm going to explain to you guys how I do so, what I look for, what I'm going to use for bait, and how I'm going to catch them, and hopefully show you how I can get a few. So here we go, burbot time, baby. I'm gonna do a couple rows here because I know that it drops off coming this way and it comes up where I am now. That stick from when we were out here last time is 14 feet. So I know it drops right here. This is the shelf I'm fishing. It comes right like this, that's the top. And it comes on this angle right here. I'm punching a bunch of holes right now so that I don't have to worry about it once it's dark. I'm gonna pop a dozen holes or so, and then I can just fish, worry about my cameras. The sun is on its way down right now, so it's pretty well about to go down but that just means it's prime time. Boy, burbs. And the trick with burbot is you just pound it in the mud. Bounce that lure right in the bottom, just right off bottom, lift it up about six inches. See how I'm just thudding it? Oh, something big up high. What's that? Oh yeah, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, I missed it. Oh, what was that? What was that? No way. That might have been a pike. That might have been a pike. Coming to look at my transducer. Burbot prime time is right now. Throwing on the buckshot, rattle spoon. Tipped with a minnow on a long shank hook, and this is a glow bait. So like I was saying to you guys, burbot spawn between very specific um, parameters and water temperatures. So there's like a one to four degree range so at that time, all these burbot are gonna start gathering up. They're gonna look for gravel. So if you can find gravel bottoms on any sort of mid-lake structure where it comes from deeper water up into shallow water, that's where you're going to find burbot at this time of year. So like I said, it's February 20th, which means it's pretty well right at the start, I would say, of the burbot spawn. I was out here a week and a half ago with Lyle, we got one and it was a male and it was getting soft on the belly so that means they were getting ready to spawn. So I'm out here and I'm on a piece of structure out in the middle of the lake here that I know uh, comes up from about 50 feet all the way around me, 40 to 50 feet uh, on three of the four sides of this. The other side goes down to about 30 but then it comes up to about 11 feet on the top of this structure and so what the burbot will do as the evening goes, it's kind of like walleye. They're gonna come from the deep water and they're gonna force their way up into the shallows and they're gonna head to these spawning areas uh, in the shallower water, which is generally where the gravel is sitting. Uh, burbot tend to have, the ratio is about three, three or four males for every female. So when you get a male burbot, he's gonna be smaller than the females. The females you'll get are big and they're fat, they're full of eggs, and the males will be smaller. So they will come in, if you've ever seen it, 
on YouTube. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. They're called burbot balls. So they actually are like, uh, like a cluster of burbots that are all just slithering together like snakes and they're on top of each other and they're spawning and these males are probing the female they're pushing on her they're hitting her they're trying to get her to start spawning so that they can then spawn with her that's kind of the idea of it so they all come in in groups so if you can find a burbot ball you're gonna have a heyday for fishing and they are fun to catch it will be as fast as you can put the lure down to bottom you'll hook them back to back to back non-stop it's it's really fun if you can find that it's actually one of the most exciting fishing opportunities i would say you can get it's it's totally different than anything else and it's just out of this world like it's it's the action is unparalleled to anything really Let's see if there's anything on the top of this lift up and shallower then i'll work deeper if not look at that beautiful sunset wow Just keep moving everybody. I'm gonna get them. I will find them. And when I do, it's gonna be burb time. Burb is the word. It's gonna be deeper in this hole. Probably be in about 23, 24. Big coming in here now. Yeah, here we go. Here we go, guys. Right on. Oh yeah, it's coming up. Here it comes. Oh yeah. There we go. There we go. That's a good one. That's a good burb. Oh yeah. That's a good ling. That one's got a little bit of fight to it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Check it out. <laughs> there we go, everybody. Dirty burb number one on the evening. Nice, that's a good one too. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Check it out, YouTube. Nice. Burbot number one, that's about a, oh, probably a five, six pounder. That's a good heavy one, and is it spawning yet? Let's see. Nope. Belly's not soft yet, it's full. See how big the belly is? You can tell it's not spawning yet. The belly will turn totally red when they start spawning. But that's awesome. Nice burb. Okay, we're on the spot. You can tell from squeezing the belly when you catch ling, whether they are spawning or not. So by me squeezing that one and nothing coming out, that tells me that the fish aren't spawning yet. They're not soft. When the females start spawning, that's when you're gonna get the ling balls because as soon as the females are ready, the males are, they're always ready. It's like people, you know, like, I've been fishing these slimy creatures my whole life and uh, it's it's honestly just a tradition and it's fun. It's a good time. I never, uh, never get bored of it. Even sitting out here right now, like there's nothing biting. I've been out for two hours and uh, I got one fish, but I'm happy. It's a good sized fish. It's gonna be delicious and I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna clean it up quick and I'm gonna cook it for you in the video. Look at that mark right there. 45 feet away. Let's see if I can get him. 
45 feet that way. Going without a fish finder. 45 feet this way is right here. Some of the best fishing I've ever had for burbot was before I ever owned a fish finder, before I ever owned any nice jigging rods. There's one right there, just like that. See? <laughs> Little one. Look at that. That's a little male. There we go, guys. Number two on the night. Little, little tiny burb. Little tiny burbot. Probably a male. That was funny. I spotted him with the live scope. I could see him over there. I said he's about 45 feet. Tiny little burbot. That's a small one. Gonna put it back and uh, see what our luck will be like here. Awesome. Nice, number two on the night. All right, it's seven o'clock, so I gotta get in and eat supper now. So stay tuned, there's a lot more where this comes from. This was awesome, night number one. They're not spawning yet. I was out here for a little over two hours and I got two fish, so. They're not on yet, but when they are on, you guys are gonna see it on the Average Joe's Fishing Show. So thanks for watching and here we are tomorrow. There we go. There it is. All right. So, tonight was night number two and I had zero success. The ling are not biting yet, the spawn isn't on. And I'm going to show you guys in a second with this big girl that I caught last night. It's a big female. She hasn't started spawning yet. The belly was firm, as I said, when I was out there. So I'm going to show you a bit of a cleaning portion of this video. Uh, I'm going to show you how to clean a burbot for this video. Then I'm going to show you how to prep the meat and how to cook the meat. And I'm going to also explain my tactics for catching them and a little bit more of an in-depth explanation of where to find these fish and how to do all these steps from start to finish essentially is what I want to show you guys. From locating the structure, locating the fish, catching the fish, and then cleaning, prepping, and cooking the fish. And eating the fish. This is about a, probably a six, five and a half to six pound burbot I would say. Nice big one. Um, kind of the ideal size to eat. When you're catching burbot, I would never keep anything really, really big. Those are massive breeders. A big burbot, a really big burbot female, will produce about 3 million eggs, which is a ton when you think about it. 3 million is insane. So anyways, I'm going to clean this one up, and uh, this is how we do it. It's pretty simple. I just ring around the head. They're pretty slimy. So put some newspaper down on the table before you get to cleaning, because if you don't, you're going to get in a lot of trouble from your wife or your mother or wherever you live you ring through the skin all the way around the body like so as you can see I've rung all the way around the head here right around 360 degrees around it then all I'm gonna do is take a pair of pliers and I'm gonna start peeling the skin all the way around just to get it started you have to make sure to get it all the way around where you've cut so right around the body down the belly because if you just start pulling it from the back uh, it's gonna hang up on the stomach and it's gonna give you a real hard time And it peels off just like a sock. All the skin right there just came off. That's going in the garbage. 
And like you can see all of the fins literally peel, the skin peels right off of them. They turn totally translucent. It's pretty cool. You're going to come down along the spine. On each side, you're going to cut right down until you feel the rib cage. They have a very, very big rib cage. It's a very prominent bone structure, so it's it's hard to hard to miss. And then I'm literally just going to peel that peel that meat off the ribs. You can uh, stick your knife through on the side of the spine and just cut your way down. You're going to fillet all that meat right off the back, right off the back like so. Right there, you've got a totally boneless fillet of ling meat from one side. Easy, super easy to do, super easy to clean off. Beautiful piece of white, pearly white bourbon meat. And there you have two beautiful fillets of burbot meat. And now, a lot of people may not use this, but I do, the belly meat. There's a big chunk there and there's no point in wasting it. Like I said before, if you kill something, use it. You just get on the other side of the ribs. And there you go, there is a huge piece of belly meat. So I know what you're thinking. God, those fish are ugly. And they are, they are uglier than sin. They're a face only a mother could love. But they are delicious. A lot of people call Ling poor man's lobster. That's a common name known for them. And uh, there's good reason to it. And I'm gonna show you that when I cook it. And one thing that I think a lot of people neglect with uh, catching and cooking fish is the preparation. You have to prep the meat with salt and water. It's very simple, all we do, and I've learned this from dad, is just put it in the sink, give it a good rinse, you're gonna take table salt, you're gonna sprinkle it all over the meat, and you're gonna just scrub it into the meat as best as you can, and then uh, give it a rinse off, but scrub it good, like wash the meat thoroughly with salt, and that will help you to eliminate that fishy flavor. It'll kill any sort of extra bacteria or whatever grows on the meat. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some table salt and I'm gonna sprinkle. I'm gonna be generous with it. It's not gonna make the meat salty because you're going to rinse it off. It's just going to help you to clean it. You work the salt into the meat. Give it a good massage, like so. Massaging it. Then I'm just going to give it a rinse off. That's it. <clears throat> meat is prepped. Now I'm going to put it in the fridge. You can soak it in milk. Milk is a neutralizer, so if you have a really fishy tasting fish, what I'll normally do is I'll put it in a, in a glass bowl and I will submerge it in milk. Only overnight. You don't want to leave it too long, between 12 and 24 hours. If you leave it longer, the milk is going to start to sour and it's not going to be any good. So what we'll normally do is submerge it in milk, put a little bit of garlic powder in the milk, mix it around, and uh, leave it overnight. And that's it. You cover it in milk, put a little bit of garlic powder in there if you want, and let it sit overnight. Fridge is full, so I'm gonna put it outside. And I'm going to cook that tomorrow for lunch. 
So I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment. I'm gonna cook the fish two different ways today. I'm gonna do one way, the uh, poor man's lobster way. So you just parboil the meat for a couple minutes uh, and then you just dip it in garlic butter and it's supposed to taste like lobster. I've done it before, so we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. The other way I'm gonna cook it is up with some beer batter. I'm gonna do a little bit of beer batter and and uh, deep fry it. So we're gonna see the two side-by-side, -side, see which one tastes better. In this pot, we're gonna put some oil in. So method number one, I'm gonna take one of the side fillets. So right here, you can see the big chunk of back meat, dripping water everywhere on mom's floor. She'll be happy. Gonna cube it up like so, kind of inch by inch cubes. And look how white that meat is. It's actually like a pearly, beautiful white meat. Very nice looking. You wouldn't think it from an ugly fish, but we're gonna uh, get to cooking here. So I have this part cubed up. I'm gonna throw it in the boiling water as soon as the water starts rolling here. And the other part I'm gonna cube up and I'm gonna put in the beer batter. So I'm just making up a basic beer batter here for the, for the second side of the fish. I don't measure anything, I just guess. I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoned salt in with it. And a tiny little bit of paprika. Pour your egg in. Water's boiling, oil's getting there. I don't know if it's quite hot enough yet. Getting close. So now watch how this meat looks when I pull it out. Pearly, pearly white. Looks identical to lobster. Look at that. Look at that. Deep fried and boiled like lobster. All right, initial reaction of each kind. We're gonna see which is better. I'm gonna start, oh look at how it just flakes apart. Wow. Eat it like an animal with my hands. Cheers everybody, fresh bourbon, poor man's lobster. Tastes like lobster. I've only had it like this once and it was years ago. That's really good actually. Wow. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. That is really, really, really good. Wow. Wow. Okay. To neutralize the flavor. Now. Option number two, beer batter. Doesn't that look delicious? Mm. Mm. 
Wow. Those are both really, really freaking good. Wow. Mmm. That is delicious. That is so freaking good. Honestly, everybody, don't sell these fish short. Like, they are delicious. They are phenomenal. That is honestly phenomenal. I wish you could taste it through the camera and just take my word for it from an average Joe. That fish is delicious. If you have the opportunity to go fishing for burbot, I highly recommend you do so. Because for one, they're really fun to catch. They're also very easy to clean. They're not uh, a complicated fish. Super easy to fillet. When it comes to cooking them, I just showed you how to do it. Very easy, very simple. Sorry, I'm burping from the beer. And uh, eating them is unreal. So. I'm gonna finish eating what I've caught and cooked. So until next time, I'm Brennan Sabalski, and this is the Average Joe's Fish and Chill. Don't forget to subscribe, everybody.